and welcome to startup hack today we are going to talk about create a windows service app in dotnet core so let's jump right in make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project do you want to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year do you want to become a software developer within just three months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. All right, let's create a bare bones Windows service application. We will use the worker service template from the .NET Core as a starting point. So. For this, we will write this command and click enter. After that, go towards your project, then use this command. After that, use this command. In order to enable the worker service app to run as a Windows service, we need to update the project a little bit by doing First of all, add the package services. Okay, now update the program.cs by adding iHostBuilder.useWindowService extension method to the create host builder process. The code snippet here shows an example. In this code, here in line number 20 is the key to creating a Windows service app. When the application is hosted in Windows Service, the extension method iHostBuilder.WindowService will set the content route, configure logging, set the host lifetime to Windows Service lifetime, and so on. Voila! Now we can build the app. Okay now, add Serilog as a logging provider. Logging is essential for monitoring the status of our application. We definitely need logging for Windows Service applications because they don't have any interface and they are totally in background. In this application, we will use Serilog to log message to both console output and physical files. We will need to install the packages serilog.enrichers.thread, serilog.extensions.hosting, serilog.skins.console, and serilog.skinsyncs.file. All of these packages should use the latest version. Then we update the main method in the program.fl file to here, like this. After that, in this code snippet, uh, we added two login syncs. Number one in console here on line number 22. And number two is with the color theme. And number two is plain text files here in the line 11 that are rolling every day. The logging messages are enriched with thread ID and log context, which are two common fields that can help us diagnosing issues, if any. In the end, we add the line over here, use Serilog to host builder so that the host will use Serilog as a logging provider. Okay, so we need to add this file system watcher. For those who are new to file system watcher, we are going to add a file system watcher to listen to the file system change notification when a new text file is created in a directory, see them. It is better to let the file system watcher live in the worker service because they will have the same lifetime we initialize the file system watcher when the worker service starts and we dispose the file system watcher when the worker service disposes. So here's the example of worker.cs file. So here's the example. Here is the file system watcher which is checking which file system watcher to watch the specific file types in the input folder which is the text file type in this project. The file system watcher accepts event handler for change created, deleted, and rename events. For demo purpose, we only handle the new text file created events in this project. So here's the example of whole file system watcher worker.cs. Okay, add configuration files. You might have noticed that input folder path is a magic string C and tam in the code here. We can improve the code by loading a configuration file to get the input folder path. We add a JSON object app settings to the app settings.json file. For the demo purpose, we only add one property input folder in the app settings object. 
The settings can be extended as needed in order to bind the app settings JSON value. We create a C sharp class file app settings.cs. So here's the file of app settings.cs. Then we add this configure, configure services over here in the program.cs file for in the dependency injection container by adding a line in the program.cs file. In the end, we can inject the settings to the worker service like this here. All right, let's add a scope service. In many cases, our applications depend on some short-lived services. For example, database connections, HTTP client. We don't want the application to hold unnecessary stale resources. So we register those short-lived services as scoped or transient dependencies in the DI container. All these should be straightforward in web applications. However, in Windows service applications, there are some extra work to do. For demo purpose, we will keep this application simple and we add two contrived services in this project. The, there are two coded snippets. So number one is service A and service B are the classes. So here's example. We inject the service B into service A. We will use service A as an entry point, run the process when a new file is created and detected by the file system watcher in the worker service. We register service A and the service B in the program.cs file. So here it is. And we can use I service provider to create a scope and resolve the scope service. So here's the example. In this way, the DI container is able to resolve all dependencies. In the last, we what we will do is we will create a cmd.bat file and use sc as a command r so, so that we have put this display name over here uh, the whole path of our service all the things start service stop service and read service and control as the file okay so once i run the cmd.bat file it's now started our service so thank you for watching this video i hope you learned how to create windows service in dotnet core so don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates to joining our course you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com thank you